Seriously, if you can draw a box, you can draw anything. That's Start. amazing. Hello to you, wherever you are out there in the world. This is Adobe Live, and thank you so much for joining us. My name is Renee DeCherry, and I'm the Marketing Manager for Drawing and Painting at Adobe. Today, we're focusing on my favorite thing, which is drawing and painting. And I've got my good friend here, Spencer, and he's going to show you how to draw, even if you think you can't. So Spencer, can you introduce yourself to the lovely people out there? First of all, thank you, Renee, for the warm welcome. I'm an industrial designer, so what that means is I'm a product designer. I design pretty much anything that people use. I've done toys, consumer electronics, I've done interior spaces, even dabbled a little bit with architecture. And my creative process always starts with a bit of thinking, of course, and visualizing those ideas. So now I'll just give a quick overview of some perspective stuff. For three-point perspective, we have, okay, the convergence. It sounds like some epic sci-fi thing, the convergence. It does. Oh yeah, from Thor, that's right. So <laughs> we have these lines converging on the left, the right. And so for three point, we're gonna add a converging point below. Oh, All okay. Right. So what I like to do is just kind of mark on the bottom here. And I do this in my head now. Um, and then draw this line like so. I'm just gonna make it a little bit heavier right there. A little bit heavier, okay. And now we have a slight taper in all directions. All right, so that's three-point perspective. It's got like an epic feel to it. Like it's rising the Convergence. Up. Yes. Yeah, so the, the amount of taper you have in your lines is going to give your drawing a certain amount of dynamic. Dynamic mm -hmm. just means kind of like energy, feel, flow. You can kind of think of it that way. All right, but seriously, if you can draw a box, you can draw anything. All right. I'm going to start telling people that and, and crediting you because people always do the like, oh, I can't even draw a stick figure, right? Like that's what you hear. And if you can draw a box, you can draw anything. If you can draw a box, you can draw anything. I love improvising and just doing whatever you all want to see. You know, I could even start with, with something like this and just kind of rough it out. Yeah. All right. Just real rough here. So when in doubt, rough it out. And in addition to that, if you sketched it and you're like, well, actually it needs to be a little bit longer. Okay, Ooh. we can we can drag this out a little bit, transform, and just keep roughing things out. Okay. Just make it easy for just make it easy for yourself. Mm -hmm. Like seriously, just speaking of that, are you also moving the iPad on your table? Like you're you're rotating it, aren't you? So, I can kind of hear it. Yeah, I, I am rotating a little bit. Do you want to see that? No, 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 it's fine. Oh, it's just, okay. it's one of those okay. things that like is one of your great <laughs> tips. Cause I think people will contort their bodies instead of contort, you know, the iPad. Yeah, find the spot that works for you. And I would yeah. say, um, just stick to that. I guess maybe we'll put a spoiler on this car. I don't know Ooh. if it's a oh, yeah. <laughs> super per se, but again, we're just, we're just roughing it out. Okay. We have a general idea of what this, this might look like. Right. The the chat's very excited about this car. There, so this was exactly what what the the people wanted. So it's a little bit of a combination of when in doubt, rough it out, and also light to get right. Because now I can tap on the layer and drop the opacity, and I have a guide mm -hmm. to help me. So if I jump yeah. to my fine liner, like I said, I'm more of a a line artist. Okay, Let's sketch one wheel in. I like to start with the wheels personally. Mm. So something like that. Nice and warmed up ellipse. That's right. And I'll just kind of hit the outside, get this other wheel in. And even as I think of think of this car, I'm trying to think of it in, in I guess you could say practical terms. So I'll give you an example. So on this layer, I will draw the cross section of the vehicle as, oh, I, right. as I see it. Okay. So, so this is the this, lumpy. Yeah, this is what's happening in my head. <laughs> I'm thinking, okay, if I cut through the car, it's yeah. going to look something like that. Okay. If I were it's to a, a slice of car. It's a slice of car. If the car were bread. <laughs> All right. Something like that. That's what I'm thinking. And that allows me to then go, oh, I know where the lines are going to go. All right. This roof line will come down like so. It's yeah. going to come down on this side like so. All right. So that's a little bit of what's happening in my head, at least as I, as I perceive it, as I'm drawing something uh, like this car. Hmm. 
And I think, I mean, keep going right now, but I would love to know where the box is. Like, I think I know where the box is and I think there's multiple boxes, right? Like, okay. like each wheel could be a, a box, right? But like, yeah, exactly. Back to so that idea. I'll, I'll show you if you guys missed the beginning of the presentation, presentation, definitely check it out. So there's a couple boxes here. Yes. Um, if I connect these, right, you'll notice what I'm trying to do in the drawing. So this is kind of the front of my box right here. Yeah. Right. And then we go over like so. Yeah. Right. So there's a, a main box for the body, if you will. And then there's going to be another box for the cab of the vehicle. Mm. Okay. Something like that. Um, for the wheels themselves, these ellipses are in boxes boxes yeah absolutely so if you can draw a box you can draw anything like i said i, I stand it. by that so but hopefully this gives you at least some idea of how you can break things down and make it a little bit easier yeah it totally does i love these curved lines it really like you know i can see how the external lines got more weight to it feels more strong you know my eyes drawn to it i can see all of these elements you've been speaking of like come to life here yeah all of this is coming to life you know and there's there's different types of lines there's implied lines there's gesture there's construction lines all of this is in this drawing all of those lines i should say are in this drawing so um it's it's definitely knowing a bit of how and when to combine things i think one thing i do want to tweak here is my front wheel needs to be a little bit rotated and a little bit wider so mm. i'm making a selection with the lasso tool in fresco this is something you can't do on paper so here's a little bit of an advantage all right so i can make that a little bit wider and right. slightly slightly rotate maybe pull that down and that feels a lot better now the next is live brushes and these are some of my favorite parts of fresco actually um like i mentioned i, I love painting i'm not great at it but i love it and fresco's brush engine has live brushes so we have two options watercolor and oil and I don't know the technical underpinnings pinnings of these. I just know they work really well. Let's pick a color here so we can kind of see. So for example. I know a little bit. I know okay. a little bit. So um, there were literally research scientists in the basement of Adobe San Jose using real paints and then trying to translate that to a mathematical equation. So it's not just texture. You think it's texture, but it's not just texture. It's, it's not also just... color. Yeah. And, and I, I've, colors I, blend. I've noticed it's almost like you're pushing the the paint around like you would with oil paint um so There's that, that's yeah that's been it's interesting and that that is a factor of pressure as well so there's pressure there's um mix and flow and, and different settings you can adjust if you really want to get into it um yeah. you can do that my favorite live brushes though i'm a little biased i love the watercolor and check yeah. this out so the the uh Oil live brushes just work on a regular pixel layer, but the watercolor live brushes will create a new layer. So I'm going to jump to, let's start with the soft wash. So there we go. And notice how, yeah, the color just really flows, right? Yeah. And really if you get like on. a red, it'll turn into a deeper orange instead Absolutely. of just going right on top, which is amazing. So now, eee. yeah, there you go so pretty you can see that just flow and you can tap on the layer and hit dry and it's almost like drying real watercolor paint so that now <laughs> when i apply the color i'm getting a little bit different response okay it's pretty cool you can adjust how much water is flowing as well so if it's ah. something you enjoy if you want tons of water and low pigment for example we can do that too all right so super super fun to play with and use it'll also affect other things on the canvas which can be interesting but certainly <laughs> certainly a creative exercise for you all right here's just a loose sketch so now i'm going to make a new layer and just below we'll just kind of wash this with some color so this is this is how i work and why i say you know i'm more of a line artist i do i do depend on my lines if i'm doing a lot of stuff like this so now i can pick some colors the other thing i'm forgot to mention in uh, the intro is that with perspective, colors also can communicate position, right? Ooh. So let's say this is in the, since I'm in Utah, the Utah desert. Oh, okay, nice. So we're going to have, going to have some nice, more saturated colors. I'm going to increase my flow here and size of the brush. 
So we'd have more saturated colors up front, for example. Right, and they're darker, is that right? Things closer to you? Uh, saturation, depends on the position of the light, but yes, uh, your shadows mm -hmm. will be a little bit darker as opposed to off in a distance. So off in a distance, I might desaturate my color like so and have nice. a less saturated color. It's almost like that atmosphere is in the way. Exactly, almost like atmospheric perspective. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, we could just throw in some color. This is the watercolor detail brush, but I do enjoy. That looks you know, good. I just, I just I actually just sometimes just like watching the colors flow, honestly. Right? <laughs> it's so much fun. It doesn't matter how advanced you are with fresco or, or new you are to drawing. Those watercolors are just entertaining. They are entertaining. Absolutely. And honestly, I, I tend to just bounce between three, which is the soft, the detail, and then the spatter from time to time if I want to add some texture so right oof that's awesome looking Usman says I don't have an iPad that's okay if you don't have an iPad that's why we showed off the sketching on paper before we wanted you to know that all the techniques will work whether or not using an iPad or paper that's beautiful Spencer I love it oh my gosh huge ups to Spencer for being an excellent teacher Thank Thanks, you so Renee. much, Spencer. Thanks, Renee. It's been super fun. Remember, when in doubt, rough it out, and just have fun with it. <laughs> <laughs>